Good morning, everybody. It's the 27th of January and it's International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And a big happy birthday to Rosamund Pike, Nick Mason, Frank Skinner and Ian Stern. It doesn't seem to get any easier for the people of Ukraine. Immediately after pledges of tanks from the United States, Germany and allied countries, Russia responded with a new wave of missile strikes. The strikes, which included about 55 air and sea-based missiles and a host of Iranian Shahid drones, left at least 11 people dead and more injured in Kiev and Odessa. Ukrainian President Zelensky had a visitor on Thursday as Sky News' Kay Burley made an appearance in Kyiv and asked some tough questions, including asking Vladimir what he would do if he was offered the chance to meet Putin one-on-one. I saw... The man who said one thing and then did another. Is it too late now? Too late? Not interesting. Who is he now? After full-scale invasion, for me, he is nobody. Meanwhile, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg reiterated that the new wave of weaponry is a sign of unified support for Ukraine and that Russia's made a big mistake. Uh, President Putin uh, made at least two big mistakes, uh, strategic mistakes, when he invaded uh, Ukraine. He totally underestimated the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian armed forces, but he also underestimated NATO and uh, NATO allies and partners. Meanwhile, in the UK, Labour's Shadow Defence Secretary John Healy was warning that it's important to have a strategy for supporting Ukraine and not just randomly donating weapons. I've argued for many months now that the government needs to move beyond ad hoc announcements of military support to Ukraine, which have our full support, to a full plan for 2023, in part because that will give Ukraine greater confidence and reassurance, but also it will signal to Putin that things will get worse, not better for Russia. With no end in sight to the current round of Tory scandals, Rishi Sunak decided that what he and his team needed was an away day. So off they went to checkers to have a group session on topics like Dominic Raab's bullying complaints, Zahawi's tax issues and probably Boris of the BBC. Oh, and if there's any time at the end, maybe plan out a strategy for the next election. Former Cabinet Secretary Lord Gus O'Donnell says that to-do list is getting pretty long. There are serious questions out there about behaviour of ministers and they need to be answered and the public needs to see that action is taken. He's not alone in wanting action. In fact, Sky News was somewhat startled to get a call from Sir Rod Stewart, who kindly offered to pay for cancer scans for people struggling on the NHS. He also had a few choice words for Rishi's away day crew. I personally have been a Tory for a long time, but I think this government should stand down now and give the Labour Party a go at it, because this is heartbreaking for the nurses. It really is heartbreaking. In all my years of living in this country, I've never seen it so bad. The Met Police has been struggling with the process of reform, with warnings earlier this week that we can expect years of prosecutions of officers accused of multiple offences. Lord Stephen Greenhall, former Deputy Mayor of London, feels that Mayor Sadiq Khan should have done more to improve public confidence in the Met. There's no performance framework to focus on increasing public confidence. It's one of the key roles of the Mayor, and this Mayor is singularly failing to do that. Former Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police Peter Fay says that new Met Police Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley has a long road ahead. But we need to be realistic. Anybody who's run a major organisation uh, and wants to try and change the culture of that knows that it takes a long period of time. And when you're talking something like a big city police force with all the challenges it faces, uh, you know, that is even more complex. Thursday was Australia Day, but before you pop on a cork hat and shout g'day mate to your nearest Australian, you should know that it's become a bit of a political hot potato. January the 26th marks the day in 1788 that the first fleet of 11 British ships landed in Australia, which saw the beginning of colonisation and the oppression of the continent's indigenous people. This Australia Day was marked by tens of thousands of protesters marking Invasion Day. Enough's enough! Stop killing the First Nations people! We demand justice and accountability! About a third of Australians now support changing the date and protest organiser Chegg Egert says it's a difficult day for the Indigenous population. This day is about sorrow for us. It's about reflection. Still to come on the Smile 7 is a big weekend of FA Cup action and Logan Roy wants you to f*** off. Right after this. Welcome back. Three.
This weekend sees the fourth round of the FA Cup get underway with a cracker of a game on Friday night between Man City and Arsenal. Saturday sees Man U, Spurs and Leicester all in action with Liverpool playing on Sunday. One man looking forward to the Arsenal game is Man City manager Pep Guardiola. His fond memories of Mikel Arteta's time working as his assistant coach, but he said it was clear that at heart Arteta would always be a gunner. I remember that uh, when we were together here, when we scored a lot of goals with our opponents, always he jam and celebrate, except one team. In one team, every time I scored a goal, I jumped and back, he was sitting there. It was Arsenal. So in that moment, I said, oh, that guy, that guy likes Arsenal. 2022 was a big year for Kiki Palmer. She picked up a Best Supporting Actress award from the New York Film Critics Circle for her role in Jordan Peele's Nope. She starred in Lightyear and even had time to host the NBC game show Password with Jimmy Fallon. She capped the year off with a dramatic reveal that she was pregnant during a Saturday Night Live host monologue. She popped up on The Tonight Show and she's still laughing about the reaction she got. Every time I look back at that clip, I'm like, why did I sound like a villain? But I was so excited. I mean, I, I always thought to myself, you know, I would love the opportunity. I Obviously, to host SNL. I just did not know it would be the same time that I was pregnant. And so I was like, I guess I got to say it. If you've been missing the brutal corporate shenanigans of the Roy clan, boy, have I got some good news for you. Logan, played by Brian Cox and his battling offspring, are returning for season four of the hit drama Succession. If you haven't seen it yet, imagine a thinly disguised version of Rupert Murdoch's life, but with more swearing and better hair. It's back on screens in March, and the first proper trailer just dropped. You cannot win. Your dad will wash you away. This is a chessboard. Are you tanking the deal? And every move is crucial. Like Israel, Palestine, Greg, but harder and much more important. This has been the Smart Seven. Wherever you're listening, do us a favor and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced, and published by Daft Doris.